And as we are about to ignite the lamp of light into our proceedings, I ask you to join me in prayer. Hari Namam Vasudevaya Namo Namam Narayanam Krishnayam Shri Ganeshaya Now, the invocation, a Ganesh Bhajan, will be rendered by Vijay Ramkisun of the Sri Ram Dham of Swaha, and he's accompanied by his brother Sunil on Tabla. Tund Mahaka Surya Koti Sama Prabha Nirviganam Kuru Me Deva Sarva Kadesh Sarvada Anyata Sharanam
Vijay and Sunil, Honorable Minister of National Diversity and Social Integration, the Honorable Clifton Dicoto, keynote speakers who've come from India and Mauritius, delegates and participants from various parts of the world. I welcome you to this, the inaugural ceremony of the first international Ramlila conference. My name is Hans Hanuman Singh, and I feel deeply honored. I felt so when Professor Brinsley Samaru from the organizing committee called me with an invitation to chair this evening's inaugural ceremony. More than a hundred years after the arrival of the Indian community, a UE professor of sociology authored a major work on the Trinidad and Tobago Society without any significant reference to the role of the Indian community in the evolution of the nation. We were still viewed as strange and alien as reported by the Board of Spain Gazette on May 30th, 1845. 38 years ago, a young historian of this university called me to be part of an organizing committee for a conference on the Indian diaspora in the Caribbean. It was the same Brinsley Samaru who phoned. Nobel laureate Vidya Naipaul was the guest speaker who had childhood experiences with Ram Leela. The 1975 conference was the beginning of diaspora conferences that followed in Guyana, Suriname, Canada, the United Kingdom, Mauritius, Fiji, amongst other places. There are a few other things I had planned saying uh, at the opening, the, the time allocated to me for remarks, but uh, because of the tightness of the program, I will forego those, but must read into the record of this inaugural ceremony of the first Ramlila conference, a few opening paragraphs of the literary genius of St. Lucia and the Caribbean, Derek Walcott, as he received the Nobel Prize for Literature many years ago. This is what he had to say, and especially for uh, the foreign delegates and participants. Felicity 
is a village in Trinidad on the edge of the Carony Plain, the wide central plain that still grows sugar and to which indentured cane cutters were brought after emancipation. So the small population of Felicity is East Indian. And on the afternoon that I visited it with friends from America, all the faces along its road were Indian, which, as I hope to show, was a moving, beautiful thing because this Saturday afternoon, Ramlila, the epic dramatization of the Hindu epic, the Ramayana, was going to be performed and the costumed actors from the village were assembling on a field strung with different colored flags like a new gas station. And beautiful Indian boys in red and black were aiming arrows haphazardly into the afternoon light. Low blue mountains on the horizon, bright grass, clouds that would gather color before the light went. Felicity, what a gentle Anglo-Saxon name for an epical memory. And Derek Walcott continued, under an open shed on the edge of the field, there were two huge armatures of bamboo that looked like immense cages. They were parts of the body of a god. His calves or thighs, which fitted on red, would make a gigantic effigy. This effigy would be burnt as a conclusion to the epic. Drummers had lit a fire in the shed, and they eased the skins of their tablas nearer the flames to tighten them. The saffron flames, the bright grass, the hand-woven amateurs, of the fragmented god who would be burned were not in any desert where imperial power had finally toppled, but were part of a ritual, evergreen season that, like the cane burning harvest, is annually repeated, the point of such sacrifice being its repetition, the point of the destruction being renewal through fire. And Derek Walcott continues, I had often thought, but never seen Ram Leela, and had never seen this theater, an open field with village children as warriors, princes, and gods. I had no idea what the epic story was, who its hero was, what enemies he fought, yet I had recently adapted the Odyssey for a theater in England, while nobody in Trinidad knew any more than I did about Rama, Kali, Shiva, Vishnu, apart from the Indians, a phrase I use pervertedly because that is the kind of remark you can still hear in Trinidad, apart from the Indians. And my final reading, the performance was like a dialect, a branch of its original language, an abridgment of it, but not a distortion or even a reduction of its epic scale. Here in Trinidad, I had discovered that one of the greatest epics of the world was seasonally performed not with the desperate resignation of preserving a culture, but with an openness of belief that was as steady as the wind bending the cane lances of the Carony Plain. We continue with our program, and I would like to invite Professor Funso Ayegina, the Dean of the Faculty of Humanities and education of this, the University of the West Indies at St. Augustine, to bring greetings.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Uh, in the interest of time, I will skip the protocol list. It has been established, but I specifically want to welcome the minister to our campus, and I want to welcome our two keynote speakers who have come uh, from very far to come and enlighten us. I bring you greetings on behalf of PVC Professor Clement Sankat, the campus principal of the St. Augustine campus. Uh, he is currently out of the country and therefore cannot be here in person, but he asked me to convey his greetings uh, to this conference. I also bring you additional greetings on behalf of the staff and students of the Faculty of Humanities and Education uh, of the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine. When the National Ramlila Council of Trinidad and Tobago approached the faculty with a request to co-sponsor this conference, we promptly agreed, but we had selfish motives, and you will hear very soon. As a faculty that is home to the disciplines of education, cultural studies, history, and the creative and festival arts, this conference undertakes inquiries that echo our own cultural and intellectual commitments. Also, the National Ramlila Council of Trinidad and Tobago and our students from the Department of Creative and Festival Arts under the leadership of um, Royal Gibbons, who are interested in the study of Ramlila, have had a long-standing, mutually beneficial relationship. The collaborative impulse embodied by this conference is a crystallization of that synergy, that collaboration between the National Ramlila Council of Trinidad and Tobago and our students and staff in the Faculty of Humanities and Education. More important, more important, as a premier West Indian educational institution with a mandate to constantly interrogate the region's migratory cultural strands, we see this conference as creating a layer of knowledge that must be factored into any attempt at understanding the complex character of the region. I take this opportunity to welcome all the researchers and practitioners who will be participating in the various levels, types, and formats of dialogue at this conference. From a cursory examination of the issues to be discussed, it is obvious that the vexed question of the purity of culture will feature. So too will the fact that no culture that wishes to survive beyond any particular point in time can afford to stay static. I firmly believe that every culture is a work in progress, and a culture that refuses to adapt invites termites to masticate his soul into the manual for other people's future. Another issue that is central to this conference is the issue of how cultures can and must be aligned to the well-being of society in particular and humanity in general. In a multicultural Caribbean, where coexistence and cross-fertilization are mandatory processes for attaining social and political stability, there is a need for constituent cultural communities to understand each other. But no group can make others understand its culture if it does not understand its culture by itself. A conference like this ensures that the primary consumers of a culture understand it and can create the body of knowledge to help engender other people's understanding of its nature and the role it can play in the evolution of a national slash regional slash global culture. 
once more on behalf of the Faculty of Humanities and Education and the larger family of the University of the West Indies, I welcome the participants in and observers at this conference to the St. Augustine campus. May your deliberations be enlightening. May you grow wiser by being wise enough to add the wisdom of others to your own wisdom. May you make the world wiser by being wise enough to share your wisdom with the world. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. And now we get, we would like to invite Dr. Surendra Rampasad to bring greetings from the Academy of Arts, Letters, Culture, and Public Affairs of the University of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, where there are active Ramlila studies. Not yet? Okay. I think I deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Hans Hanuman Singh, the Honorable Clifton Dekoto, Minister of National Diversity and Social Integration, Mrs. Kalawati Ramsubik, President of the National Ramila Council, and other members of the Council, Dr. Surinja Rampasad, who was a bus to initially be here because I was running a little bit late, but I'm here now. My name is Narvin Budai of the UTT, but Dr. Rampasad is our Board of Governor, Professor Iogena of UWI, our guests from Suriname, Guyana, India, Mauritius, and I guess some other places. Brothers and sisters, namaste, sitaram, good evening. Let me say, um, I'm here this afternoon, this evening, representing Professor Chokdas, who you know as Professor Hollis Liverpool. He's head of our um, Arts, Culture, and Letters, and Public Affairs um, Academy, but he had surgery recently and he's recuperating. So I'm trying to fill his shoes here this evening. And let me say on behalf of UTT, it's, really, it's indeed a pleasure to be standing here um, at the National and International Ramila Conference being celebrated here in Trinidad and, and discussing the things that are happening in Ramila across the world. Only that's what, about less than two, three months ago, UTT, uh, we also announced and celebrated our launch of the UTT Ramila Institute. And this was in partnership with the Ramila Council, the National Ramila Council and a number of other stakeholder groups. And over the past three months, I can tell you, it, it has been great for me to be part of this experience because my involvement in Ramila has been sitting behind the bamboo dividers, looking on. And here I was in my role at UTT in terms of business development, attempting to work with Ramila and help develop Ramila across the country. I think it's really a great initiative by the leadership of UTT to go this way as the only national university to represent the interests of the Ramila group. And I think working with Ms. Ramsubik and her team at the National Ramila Council, uh, this has really opened our eyes to the, the things that are happening in Ramila. Uh, within the next couple of weeks, we'll be launching our program as a practitioner's course in Ramila, which will take from miming to straight up to character characterization to even the business of Ramila. And when we say the business of Ramlila, it, there's a cost to it. How do we market? How do we create something that is sustainable um, to ensure Ramlila spreads across the country? So we'll be teaching this as a program for the practitioners initially. And as we get into September, October, we'll be launching our academic programs in Ramlila, uh, starting with a certificate. Uh, that is not all that the Ramla Institute will be doing. Uh, there will be, yes, launch of our own journal, Ramla Journal, and, and other publications. There will be research, there will be teaching and learning, and other aspects of developing Ramlila um, across the country. Um, just in closing, 
to say that we look forward to working with the University of Trinidad and Tobago and UE. Uh, there are very few projects in the country that I know of, at least in the recent past. And let me say, I think you should really congratulate both institutions, uh, the both key institutions of Trinidad and Tobago, partnering with in this, in this venture. So please give UE, UTT a round of applause. And I think this, um, Professor Regina, this should start the way of a lot more involvement. Um, our recent addition of uh, new president, Ryan Singh, I think he is going to bring a closer relationship between both institutions. And I think the lead or the head of, uh, I think if we said earlier today, our parent is one minister. Um, that is Senator the Honorable Fazal Karim. And he continues to be our driver and lead in terms of a lot of these projects. So as I end, let me say thank you to all of our partners that we have, cont we have been working with and continue to work with, um, the Mar Saba, um, and they are doing lots of work in Ramla within the, the school system, which is excellent work. Um, Swaha and our own Professor P Prakash Basad, who works at UTT, has been sup very supportive of this project. The Hindu Prachar Kendra has also been a part of our council. But I think this afternoon, this evening, I would really like to thank Ms. Ram Subik and the National Ramla Council. Um, if I start with names, it will be too long and we'll go into later on in the night. But please give the National Ramla Council and Mr. Ram Subik um, a round of applause. And, you know, I think the, the person who started a lot of this, I think he must be congratulated. And he is, I will say it now, Premnad Gupta. But in a couple of months, he will be walking across the stage of UTT celebrating his doctorate and be called Dr. Premnad Gupta. And let me say thank you, Dr. Gupta for the work you've done. And on behalf of UTT, I hope and look forward to some more relationships being built over the next two days. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Budhai. And with your own recognition of the contribution of the next speaker, Lady of Leadership and perseverance and persistence and vision, I invite now to give us a conference overview, Mrs. Kamal Ramzubik, the president of the National Ramlila Council of Trinidad and Tobago. Sit around everyone and uh, shout with me, Ramlila people, Ramlila fraternity, Ramlila practitioners, Jai Sri Ram, Jai Sri Ram, Jai Sri Ram. I really haven't written a paper, so I'm going to speak off my head. First of all, I must recognize some people who have been instrumental in helping us to reach this far. I am going to start, even though they are present here, they are also people who have assisted us greatly. Honorable Clifton Dicoto, Minister of National Diversity and Social Integration. We also have Professor Ayajina of UWI. And with Professor Ayajina, I would have liked to call his name first and foremost, is Mr. Roel Gibbon. He's sitting somewhere around. And I call him my brother and one of the best advisors we have had for many years. Others, I would like to recognize Dr. Suren, Suren Jarampasad. We have started working with UTT recently, and we're gaining a lot of grounds towards the institu institutionalizing of Ramlila. Also, the young man who was here, Mr. Navin Budhai. 
very powerful young man, very persuasive, and very amiable. And uh, he can have old people like us bend to his will. So I say congratulations to him. Um, I will also like to recognize, if she is here, P.S., Ms. Bascom from Ministry of Arts and Multiculturalism, with whom we have worked with many, many years. And in, in, in the case of myself, for the past 20 years, um, relating to Ramlila and other cultural activities. And there are other, I, I will also like to recognize Pandit Rampasad Parashram, and I think today he's representing our Minister of Transport, Honorable Chandra Sharma. So he's in the front row, I would like to recognize him. Um, my friend Brenda Gopi Singh from the Hindu Women's Organization, but she herself is special envoy to women and girls in the Caribbean. And there are many friends, honored friends I will call them, Ramlila leaders of uh, Ramlila groups, most important to this conference. I would like to recognize them and all the Ramlila organizers and players and supporters. Special friends who have assisted us in our many ventures. These are all people who have assisted us in coming to this day, a most historical day in TNT, not only for Ramlila, but for Trinidad and Tobago. As you see, the title there is Ramlila, the theme is Ramlila in the global village. And why are we having this international conference? One would say the performance of Ramlila is not academic. Why are we meddling with academia? But global first, because Ramlila is global. In 2005, UNESCO has recognized that Ramlila tradition is worldwide. It's a worldwide intangible cultural tradition. And therefore, that's, that is why we can have all these people from various countries who are Ramlila practitioners and researchers. They were able to come when we have invited them. And I'm going to mention their name in a little while. Why a conference? Why papers? I think all of you know that traditionally, Ramlila is an oral tradition. It's a, uh, all, it was a hands-on approach. There was no sort of um, formal um, rehearsals and uh, practice and teaching and so on. People saw Ramlila and they did Ramlila, or it was handed down by grandparents from one generation to the next. But we are moving, that is still good, that still happens, but not in such a large scale again, because sometimes people are there, they get old, they don't record things, and sometimes the young ones are not even taught. With a conference like this, we will have documentation with all styles of practices from many countries. And it will be like, as Navin said, a sort of template that you can even look at these things. I've seen one study in Ramnagar where even all the diagrams and so on, they are drawn in detail. We have some of that in Trinidad too. If you look at the PhD thesis of Dr. Sad Balkaran Singh, a, a, a UTT graduate also, you will see some of those diagrams from the Felicity um, Ramlila group. So it shows you that I can now read his thesis 
and I can get knowledge that I didn't know of because sometimes it's not possible to go to our, all Ram Leela's and observe all details. So this is one benefit, knowing about our own Ram Leela because we have about 20 local presenters and a lot of young people. And we have quite a list of foreign presenters and I, we definitely can learn from them. We will also have a publication after the conference. And then we could look at the way they do things and we can even assimilate uh, best practices. So there are other benefits, but I'm just listing a few of them. And uh, yes, we are moving with the trend. The world is a global village, and we are making Ram Leela into that too, bringing everybody together in TNT, or all the people from all over the globe. At this point then, you have your programs. I'm not going to give you the details of, of what will transpire for the two days, that's tomorrow and Sunday, but we do have um, nine panels um, with various teams, and in the forefront, um, the chair, the day chair will be Dr. Brinsley Samaru, and again, we must thank him too for all his efforts in helping to organize this conference with Dr. Gupta and Dr. Sadbal Karan Singh and uh, Mr. Roel Gibbon. So now I'm going to call on the foreign presenters, really high profile personalities. I will ask them to stand. It's a bit dark out there, but um, they will stand and please recognize them, each one with a round of applause. Mr. Amrika Anirudh from Suriname, Please stand and show yourselves. You Dr. Gita Pasad Gangaram Pandey from Suriname. <laughs> Dr. Purnima Ragbar from Mauritius. <laughs> Professor Molly Kaushal from India. <laughs> Mr. Satchanan. Prem Suk from Suriname. <laughs> Mr. Amrit Pasad Gangaram Pandey from Suriname. <laughs> Mrs. Sumintra Patadin from Suriname. <laughs> Pandit Balram Patadin from Suriname. Pandit Bhaskar Sharma, Canada, slash Guyana. <laughs> Mr. Raju Mohit, Mauritius. <laughs> Mr. Rampasat Tiwari, Canada, slash Guyana. <laughs> Ms. Rishika Meharishi, USA. Professor Richard Schachner, USA. And last but not least, I must tell you who came with this idea to the Ramlila Council, himself a founder of the Ramlila Council in the 90s. Dr. Premnath Gupta, sometime in January after we had been incorporated in 2012, July, asked, what next? Well, we had things planned, but we didn't know this big thing was coming up. So he said, what about if we have a conference, an international conference? And I said, Al always ready for a challenge, why not? So a few months after, I, uh, as the president of the council, I took it to the council and almost unanimously at a general council meeting, the idea was accepted. And we went into it feverishly, Ex especially Dr. Gupta. And we form a committee with all those people that I call and some members of the board of the Ramlila Council. And here we are today. And we say thank you, Prabhu Sriram, 
and thank you to all those who have made this possible. Jai Sri Ram. Thank you, Mrs. Ram Subik. And now we are going to have an excerpt from the Ram Leela from the celebrated and one of the oldest groups in the country, the Dao Village Ramlila and Cultural Organization. Here is an excerpt. Shabri Ma awaits the arrival of Prabhu Sri Ram as instructed by her guru. She, an ardent devotee, with profound devotion for her Lord, Sri Ram, would every day gather fresh flowers and pick and select only the sweetest fruits for her Lord. The day then came when the Lord, with his brother Lakshman, fulfills her long-awaited desire. Taking part as Shabri, Renuka Jagesa, Sri Ram, Andi Subhag, Abhinash Subhag as Lakshman. The director is Priscilla Bikram Das, the Dao Village Ramlila and Cultural Organization. <laughs> शरीर को त्यागने से पहले मैं आपसे भक्ति का ज्ञान प्राप्त करना चाहती हूँ मैंने अपने गुरुदेव से नवदा भक्ति की महिमा सुनी है वही आपको सुनाता हूँ प्रथम संत सत संग Do you believe? 
परम सुख दाता चित लगा सुन मेरी गाथा तज अभिमान करो गुरु सेवा ब्रह्म विष्णु शिव सम गुरु देवा हो कृपा मुझ पर बनाए रखिए अब मुझे अपने गुरुदेव के पास जाने की आज्ञा दीजिए 